today. Welcome back to part, uh, nah, I need joking. Uh, I'd like to welcome all my new subscribers and I hope you enjoy the content on my channel. Uh, if you missed the last episode, there's a link up there now. Uh, now that I've finished the mill, pretty much, um, I've only got those mini DROs to add to it, so when they arrive I'll add them. But what I really need is a milling vice, so uh, in this episode that's what I'm going to do. Build myself a nice solid milling vice. So uh, follow me over to the mill and we'll get started. Well viewers, so I've had this thing whirring around in my head now for a few months. Uh, and as per usual I don't have a plan or any drawings or any other damn thing. Originally when I was doing up the, uh, the table and everything, I pulled this thing off the top of it and the plan was to rebuild that but now that everything's done I'm looking at that going dude that's just way too big and uh, I don't need anything that big so I'm not going to use that and uh, the plan is to uh, use this as a base and fit this great big lump up in there I might actually add a couple of pieces of this underneath it yet, I don't know, I've made up my mind. In fact, I'll have to order some more of that because they're the only two bits of that I've got left. If that one was longer, I'd be laughing, but it's not. So, and this will probably be the movable jaw here. And uh, I'll put a big slot up the centre of this and I have a piece underneath. What I'm toying with is a couple of bits of this on top here. And then another bit of this plate. like that maybe, I don't know, somewhere in there, and uh, sliding that backwards and forwards on the top of there. I've got some more of that big 19mm lead screw that I used in here, and I'll put that in that. So uh, there's the plan stand, and how it comes out is anyone's guess. So follow me along. Alrighty, so I guess the best place to start is some of these uh, bits that have been really roughly cut with a gas axe. Anyway, let's uh, have a crack at this. This is that 16mm end mill I got from the second hand guy out from the country. I've put the weird grind on it. I'll give it a whirl, see how it goes. I'll be there all day with that. I might change to the uh, 20 mil one and get it done a bit faster. I'll bring it back later. Decided to uh, switch over to the face metal and give it a whirl. It's not doing a bad job, but like, it is so noisy. Old mate won't be enjoying it at all. But it's still a fair bit to come off. That slopes down and that way as well. So still a bit to come off yet. And then the other side's not much better. Well, that's that side done. Just took a really heavy cut on this last pass. It's hellishly hot. A little bit of crap left up this end, but I only really need 100 mils of it, so I'll get that out of there. So I'll hell of a burr on it. I'll clean these burrs off, flip it over, and do the other side, and I'll just uh, end mill this end and whatever uh, where I cut it off. I'd also like to uh, thank Mark, you know who you are, for the very generous donation of two bottles of this that uh, arrived here today from the States. Uh, much appreciated, and uh, there's a gift for you in return mail. Thanks very much. Like I said before, this side's not much better than the other side, and uh, some respects it's probably worse because they're pretty deep. So I won't bother filming any of this, and uh, when I get this done and ready to uh, fly cut, then I'll watch that doing some video again. Well, viewers, I don't know what this bit of mystery metal is, but by the Christ, it's tough. It's been chewing up tips like you wouldn't believe. But I've just put on a set of these uh, H types, which are supposedly for finishing and made a full width cut up through here. It actually doesn't feel too bad, it's a little bit ripply, but I might leave it at this and put an undercut in there. I don't want to chop too much more off that. So I think I'll call that done as far as removing all the rubbish off it. I think I'm going to have to put some cooling fans up in the control box because after a little while this thing starts to, uh, it gets very hot, the motor gets hot, everything gets hot and then it starts hunting and carrying on so uh, I'll have to do something about that I think. Alrighty, after a lot of uh, thought, consideration, I've come up with a plan stand. I've trimmed this down, get the shit off the end of it 
uh, need to mill up that one or both sides. This, this side's pretty straight, but it was cut on a bit of an angle. So I'll clean that up. I've ordered a, another piece of this this morning. So what I'm going to do is weld a piece of that up under each side, which will give me my mounting points. I'm also going to use this stuff for the jaws. And this will be fixed up this end. I haven't decided yet whether I'll bolt it, weld it, and what I'll do with it. Uh, this bit of stuff here will have this mounted to it for the movable jaw. And in this section here, I'll put a slot in here. And up under the slot, we'll have a, like a big T nut made out of this, which will run up and down in there. I'll fit a bit of something across the end here to uh, mount the nut in and I'll use a piece of this 19mm uh, lead screw to drive it in and out. So that is the plan stand and uh, I'll just keep working on it. Hopefully this stuff won't take five days to arrive like the last order I gave. But anyway, so I'll get on with it. Well, that's the base all cleaned up. I ended up with a brand new 12 millimeter uh, end mill I was using there, and it's ended up with a chip in one of the edges. It's a bit of a bugger, but anyway. And obviously, uh, I've got a little bit of a rigidity problem here. It sort of chatters a little bit as it runs up and down there. Uh, I suppose I can live with that. Well, might find ways of improving as I go. But anyway, so that's that. All I need to do with that now is cut a hole through here. I was going to fly cut it, but I've decided that uh, I'll wait till I weld the two strips on the bottom edge and then I can use them to bolt it down to fly cut it. Because the other side doesn't matter so much as the top side. That's that bit done. I'll get on with the rest. Well, that's the tea nut taken care of. Well, so much for making the tea nut first. I made a stuff up up in this corner here and I put the power feed on in the wrong direction. It was trying to drive the cutter up into the corner and I was wondering whether it moved it and I didn't check it and yep, it moved it. Check this out. Problem is, I don't have another piece of this stuff to make another T-nut with. And that's already cocking a sock job. Oh well, have to do something else. Well, I might as well finish. I'll square all this back up and finish that damn slot and make something else up to put in there. Alrighty, this should be the last pass to finish cleaning that up again. I want it to be around 21 millimetres. It's ended up at around 23 because of the way it dived in this corner and pulled the whole thing across. Ugh. 
so dirty of myself. Sorry, you can't see it. But Mm, I'm gonna have to move the camera. Sorry. Alrighty, so uh, I got in and cleaned up this corner here with a with an eight mil end mill. I'd like to have used a six, but um, it's just not quite deep enough to get down in there because it's 15 millimeters thick. This thing. So a uh, little step there, I'll file off. But I'm gonna call that done. It's a shame this thing won't fit in there. Mm, bastard! That was I'm just. So damn peeved about that, but anyway, get on with it. Alrighty, new day, new parts to make. Uh, those two strips of flat I ordered will be here today so I can get on with finishing the base. But in the meantime, I'll get on with doing this. Now, where the lead screw pushes the, or moves the movable jaw, I would like to put a thrust bearing in there, but I don't have the room to fit it. So what I'm going to do is use a ball bearing, and we can see that down in there, that ball bearing. All right. So in the face of this, I'll use a ball nose end mill and cut a little round half moon socket for it to sit into and the same on the end of this. Then to keep all this captive, get that ball before it rolls away, I will, and all that will be bolted on to here with just these two bolts, I will slot that and then I will mill a section out of here so that this can rotate in there but I'll turn most of that off and then I'll that's 12 millimeters so I'll turn this down to 12 mil and put a 3 mil wide 12 mil groove in there so that it will be captive inside here and then this will run freely in the machined out bit inside with the cone in the end of it so that's what I'm going to do something else I'm going to do to this is uh, variation on a theme I've seen the, uh, I think they call them engineers' vices or tool room vices or whatever, where the clamping is done with a bolt down through this way. Well, this one will have the T nut underneath this and well below that and well below the base, and it will be held in place with one uh, countersunk or eight millimeter screw like this from up from the bottom, and it will be locked tight and in place so that it, it can just move freely and that's all. Now, to remove any chance of this kicking up like that, like a lot of those little cheap uh, drill press vices do, I'm going to go right down through here with a bolt that will, will never be tightened up, other than once you've got it up, you, you nip it up into place so that's where it needs to be, and I can tighten it down and pull that T-nut up and grip this thing really tightly so it can never kick up like this. Alrighty, so I set it all up in there and uh, because I have a 12 mil hole I used uh, a 12 mil end mill to line it all up to get it centered and I've just slowly cut down and down and down and down with the 12 mil end mill and then I widened it slightly to about 15 millimeters and now I'm going to push this 16 mil end mill up through there I haven't got hold of it by much so that's why I took as much out of it as I could bit by bit with a smaller end mill now I'm cutting both sides of this slot with this and I'm hoping it won't tear it out to be more one side than the other so I might have to uh, move it over this way and take another cut up this side. Damn these little splinters you get from this stuff, unbelievable. It still needs a bit more. Right, think that'll do it? Well viewers, that took a damn sight longer than I uh, was hoping it would take and I added this little brass ring in here as a retainer uh, because when I machined the, the thread off it uh, I had to go a lot deeper than I wanted to just to get rid of it. Anyway, so I've uh, Loctite that out. It's a sort of semi-press fit, interference fit with some Loctite on it. And this all fits in there like that. And we'll just bolt up like that. Beautiful. 
just what I was after. Perfect. Alrighty, so this uh, length of steel I was waiting on arrived yesterday and uh, I've chopped it up this morning, marked everything out. And I'm just going to, what I'm going to do is weld it each end, maybe in the centre, maybe. Because I don't want to distort the base too much by welding it too much. So I'll weld that across there, but I think I'll just tack it to start with. Because I've bought some of these and I'm going to, uh, they won't stick out the top so I can blind, to do it into a blind hole, countersink them, and I'll put three of them in here. I'm not sure I can get away with only bolting it. I might, like I said, put another weld out here somewhere. But that's what I'm going to do today. So I'll get on with that. Far out. Just wasted two hours battling my way into town and back to take my daughter and get her ears pierced. Traffic here on weekends is horrendous. Due to 10 million Bangkok people coming down here for the weekend. Anyway, I'm so glad right now that I uh, replaced this little uh, bracket here. The other week, I cast up that new one. It's the new only mini one I made. But anyway, because I don't want to drill the way through these, so I need to stop. I won't make you sit through all of that, but anyway, we'll get on with this. Whoa, I'm glad that's finished. I'm staying in the sun here and it's doing its level best to cook me. No, not to mention this place getting a bit hot. Alrighty, lucky last. I think I might call it a day shortly because it's getting awfully hot. And before I do much after this, I need to drill a heap of holes in uh, in that big, big chunk that goes up on the end here. And I don't want to go and stay in the sun again and do it, so I'll do that tomorrow. I usually start a bit earlier in the morning drilling holes because it doesn't make much noise. I tell you, geez, there was a marked difference uh, as I drilled down through. This is S45C and this is a bit of mystery, mystery metal. And there was a, a real difference. Now, how much effort was taken to drill through them and the sound the drill was making. This is a lot softer than that, I think. This is probably just a bit of hot rolled. Miles steep. All right. Well, not perfect, but that's a whole lot better than that shitty finish I got from the uh, face mill. Much happier with that. Well, viewers, I didn't get that early start I was talking about. I sleep in instead. Don't get the opportunity much here. Anyway, so I spent ages drilling all this holes. I only drilled three on each side originally uh, for each slot, and then kept looking at thing, and that'll come back to bite me at some stage, so... Added a fourth one to each one, so I've slotted this one, so I've got uh, three more to go, and in from the side on these ones. Uh, was get, once I've done that, I was going to set it up and fly cut the bottom, but because of the lack of travel I have on this table, I'm starting to consider getting out my uh, surface grinder and giving it a lick with that. Just want to make sure it's absolute, you know, it's flat, and then I'll flip it over and do the same thing on the on the top because I really don't think I can cover this in one, one pass, even turned around that way, with a fly cutter. Might be able to, but uh, I noticed with that block when I was doing it up, the, the more I had that tool hanging out, the more ripply things got. Uh, I re-trammed that head this morning again because I got lazy when I fitted it up the other day and didn't fit it, didn't tram it, so I've just, I've redone that this morning. Anyway, we'll get on with this. If you've been enjoying this video up until this point, uh, 
I'd really appreciate it if you'd uh, give it a big thumbs up and smash that like button. And feel free to comment down below anytime. I'm um, more than happy to uh, to read them and I always reply to them in some way, shape or form. So let's get on with this, shall we? Let's put a bit of a chamfer in this hole. I'm going to have to move this forward to do these second back. These are second set of holes here, so I'll chamfer these front two while we're here. Use this smaller tool because it's got an 8mm shank so I don't change the collet and just swap it out with the... That'll do me. That'll do mate. Well that hasn't come up too bad. Um, I tried to grind it with it this way but I couldn't get the coverage I needed to get right across it. Paying the price for only having a little short table. So now I'll flip it over and I'll grind the other side. Uh, that tea nut's come in use for something. It's good to hold that down, keep that underneath these surfaces. All right, we'll flip it over and we'll do the other side. Well, <laughs> I looked over at the camera at one stage and saw something and realised that the uh, damn thing had turned itself off. Anyway, so I've made a lot of passes over there. You can see the uh, gloss in it, mate. It's like a mirror. So it's got a few little scratches and things in it that I'm not real happy with. And God, is that hot. But, uh, and a few crappy bits up this end here. But let's face it, most of it's working life. Uh, the jewels will be running in this area here anyway. But I think I might uh, finish that by hand and uh, make it just a little bit, get some of those little scratches and things out of it. God, that's hot. But anyway, still quite a few hours work left in this thing, so uh, I was hoping to do this all in one go, but there's one, plenty of hours work left. So I think I'll call this the end of uh, part one in this vice build. So join me again next weekend for uh, part two. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.